headphones with so much fun, they should be illegal. It's the Grado Labs 325IS, and these are handmade in Brooklyn, and you can tell. And there's something to be said about um, just the down-to-earth feel of a lot of the handmade things that come out of Brooklyn. And these have that. They're handmade, and they're made out of just really good components. There's no nonsense going on here. They've used exactly, uh, you know, what they want to use, and it's just a very simple and clean design. The first thing I want to note before we go on is that these are some of the most open headphones that I've ever used, uh, and therefore they have a huge sound state. On the top we have leather, yes, and then there's metal on the inside of there. Uh, these are pretty uh, maneuverable and they're not too tight. The clamping force is barely even there. There's not a lot of padding on the top of the inside here, uh, but again, they sit, you know, pretty lightly on your head. As far as the actual cans themselves, they freely rotate thanks to this simple design. All we have here is a bit of plastic for the left and the right, and then there's uh, some metal going through, and that also is how we adjust, just like that. It's very simple, and one thing that's nice about this is it stays. It's very secure, move a little bit, it stays there. Never has it slipped once. And these I uh, purchased used, so they've been around a little bit. Purchased them used, clean them up, bought some new uh, you know, foam pads for them, and everything's good. On the back here, it's metal. These are 330 grams, so they're a bit heavier than like the 60, the 80, the 125, uh, etc. And these have a nice powder coat on them. Um, just like they're aluminum, and then they powder coated it with like a silver, and it does not pick up fingerprints. There's like no fingerprints on this. It's a miracle. Also, as you can see here, extremely open there on the sides. And when we flip it around and look at it this way, very just it's just open everywhere. Um, and these pads come off very easily. So I'll go ahead and take the pad off. As you can see, this is the, uh, the on the ear pad. Comes right off. There's the driver. There's a little bit of mesh right there. And they've, uh, you know, allowed us to see on the inside. They could have just gone all black and, and done it that way. But they've allowed us to see what's going on on the inside. And one of the things that's interesting about the open air philosophy that they have going on is they have really, really tried to do everything they can to minimize any refractions. They don't want any sounds bouncing around, no echoes. And that gives you extremely clean sound and a really nice sound stage. Now, uh, as far as the pads go, you can optionally get some larger pads here and uh, put those on there. And these things go on just so easily. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, uh, I guess, stiff foam. You know, it's not like too soft and squishy or anything like that. It's not memory foam. It's just standard foam, you know? There it is. I'll put the other one on and then put these on. But now these have become sort of an over-the-ear design, and they still, they do not, you know, really encompass the entire ear. Uh, these are designed just to sit on your head. So you put them on, and there it is, just sitting on your head, and then it just adjusts so easily. So this is actually almost not even there they're just on my head when i first got them this was a little bit itchy and these were a little bit itchy and uh, with the on the ear headphones i'm still very aware that i'm wearing these with the over the ear foam uh, it didn't really change the sound quality at all and these do not create a seal around your head at all the sound just goes all over the place it's I, I can i can maintain a conversation with somebody who's in the room because there's sound coming in and they can hear the music anywhere in the room while I'm wearing these. This could be uh, really good for someone who wants a large sound stage. Uh, they're also really good for listening rooms and that sort of thing. It's not gonna be good for like a really loud, noisy coffee shop. Um, and it's not gonna be good for, you know, like a library or something where you don't want the sound to bleed out. And everyone's gonna be like, why the hell are you in here in the library listening to heavy metal? Get out of here. All right, so um, the cord on these, as you can see, it's a Y, splits and goes to each, um, you know, each individual can there. Uh, the cord is six feet long, and it is a bit heavy because it is, this is a tough cord. It's pretty much like a guitar cord, like a quality guitar cord. And it terminates right here in a 6.3 millimeter jack. That's a quarter inch jack. You can get an eighth inch jack, like a, a dongle adapter type thing for it. Um, you can also get one of these. They sell on their website like a dongle adapter. I would really recommend using one of those because you don't want, um, you know, something like this plugged into an iPod or a phone, that is a lot of stress to be putting on, uh, you know, your headphone jack on your, uh, on your phone. So if you want like an eighth, eighth inch or a 3.5 millimeter, get the dongle cable instead of this. I've been using this a little bit, but it, I don't like what it does to my components. It just scares me. Let's talk about specs real quick. Uh, I'm not gonna really get, get too nerdy about the specs because sound quality to me matters more than specs. Frequency response on these is 18 to 24. And uh, the impedance is 32 ohms, meaning that these are appropriate for anything from portable devices, but they certainly will sound really good uh, with a good headphone amp 
delivering clean audio. I want to note that since these are 32 ohms, if you've got a device that has a lot of output impedance, it's going to affect the sound quite a bit. So you want to make sure you have a nice neutral, uh, you know, source. All right, let's talk about the sound quality. Now, when you first put these on, um, you're going to notice that you're going to hear nuances in your music that you normally didn't hear. They're also uh, a nice bright headphone. Uh, if you go over to Headroom, you can check out the frequency response graph. And just looking at that, you notice that around the 100 hertz, it's up about five decibels, then it rolls down kind of flat through the middle. And then uh, we've got a couple spikes in the treble range. These sound really good for rock and roll, metal, jazz. Um, also, classical sounds really good. Um, the sound is... I guess you would call it almost a hi-fi sound. I'm not going to get too nerdy with a, a lot of the different, you know, terminology and stuff. But the sound stage, that's what I really want to focus on here because this has a huge sound stage. Uh, binaural recordings with, with a, you know, set of 325 IS headphones are freaking scary. Games that have like a, you know, good headphone mode or even just playing Quake Live and that sort of thing. Um, I feel like I have a decent advantage with these uh, compared to my other headphones just because I always know exactly where people are. I know if they're on this floor, I know if they're on this floor, I know if they're flanking me from one side or the other, and it's almost unfair. So I really prefer these for games over any of the other headphones in this price range that I've currently used so far. Uh, issues or anything like that. Uh, I really don't have any issues with these other than the fact that they're not as analytical as some headphones in this price range. So if you're looking for a studio monitor uh, or a studio reference head, headphones, this may not be the perfect solution for you. However, they're extremely fun. They give you enough clarity that you can actually use them for uh, professional applications and that sort of thing. Um, but they're just, they're just so much fun, man. I mean, if, if I could, I'd wear them all the time. Uh, as far as comfort with glasses go, they do kind of sit on the, uh, on the glasses. These are a bit strange. These are the aviators with the, you know, the sides like that. Uh, so they're not quite as comfortable with a regular pair of glasses, however. I've got another pair over here. Oh yeah, this is like no big deal. So these are almost, um, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're wearing glasses or not, they feel about the same. So that's a very, very good thing. So to sum it up, these are the most fun pair of headphones that I currently have. And it's hard to have more fun than this without spending a ton more. Also, I love the fact that they're handmade and they use quality components. I would probably expect these to be a buy it for life item. Uh, the weakest parts being the plastic on the side, which is easy to replace. And also these are like pretty cheap. So you can just replace these if anything happens to them. And there's a lot of different options out there uh, for the different pads, you know, that you can get some, I don't know, aftermarket pads or just whatever. There are a lot of people out there messing around with them. There's even people that are like treating them and doing strange things with them, like washing them and fabric softener 74 times and all that. But uh, yeah, you don't really need to do that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and listen to some music. Um, I, I do want to note again that metal sounds amazing. Uh, classical bluegrass sounds ridiculous. I mean, anything that has, uh, you know, decent low, like upright bass plucking and some like nice highs, like acoustic instruments ringing out or just metal with double bass and, you know, like crunchy guitars on the top is going to sound really, really good with these. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend these. Mm -hmm. 